Hello my hiking friends, it is so nice to see you here and today we are going to continue with our little educational series here on the channel. Last week I talked about emergency kits and today I'm going to talk about first aid kits. So if my emergency kit is something that I never touch except of in case of emergency. But my first aid kit is something that I always use and restock every time after I come back from a trip. So these are items that are sort of like consumables. I'm gonna quickly say also the goal of my first aid kit is to help me manage small cuts and bruises that I may get when I'm out hiking, but it will not cover big issues like broken legs or sprained ankles because when I'm out hiking and I get uh, such a serious injury, I will get out of the trail and uh, seek professional help, go to emergency room or call, a, call an ambulance. And I know that I can do it because I hike in areas uh, where these things are accessible, where I have cell phone service. If you know you are going hiking in an area where you don't have cell phone service or you can't access a road quite easily to get to an ambulance and so on, you need to be prepared much, much more. Having a bigger first aid kit, having a personal locator, beacon, personal locator beacon with you all the time is very very important especially in mountain areas where you may need to have a helicopter come and rescue you. That said this is my first aid kit it's quite minimal and uh, let me show you uh, what I have. So this is my first aid kit it's quite lightweight and small as you can see and I keep my things in this sturdy ziploc bag that is a little bit more sturdier than these uh, like ordinary freezer ziploc bags so all of my contents will stay nice and dry all the time. The first item I might say is the most important one and that is antiseptic or alcohol something to clean your wounds because you can use whatever to cover your wounds but if your wounds stay dirty however small your wound is it's gonna hurt it's gonna be infected and it's gonna hurt a lot that's why I carry a small separate uh, antiseptic with me I buy a bigger bottle and then uh, pour a smaller amount here in this small one that it's sort of like a travel travel spray you can buy and why do I like this liquid uh, antiseptic is because I like to be quite liberal with my disinfectant on my wounds so I am sure that I get all of the dirt out from there. I find it a little bit harder to get into the wound with an alcohol swab and also alcohol swabs you know the little packets they sting because they have alcohol in it. This uh, disinfectant doesn't have alcohol in it uh, it has something else as an ingredient that will help to disinfect your wounds. And I always refill this bottle after I come back from a trip so I know when I go out I always have this full bottle with me and this is enough for me for sure even if I have the worst of blisters. Okay, second up, a band-aid. And I always have a lot with them because I get really bad blisters because my feet are weird. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's another story. I only carry band-aids with me that are this textile material. I like these textile band-aids because they are stretchy so it is much easier to put them around the fingers or heels or whatever and I feel they are a little bit more breathable as well and more sturdy uh, compared to the plastic ones that, uh, that say they are waterproof. They are not waterproof, they just keep the moisture around your, uh, around your wound and do, do, do not allow it to breathe so I really do like these. You can also have um, blister band-aids that I have found quite useful. They are expensive, but they are really, really nice things to have when you have uh, hotspots or blisters. I also carry wound strips with me. These are little strips uh, that basically are like stitches, <laughs> uh, but in a, like a plaster form, you can really uh, zip up your wounds. What I oftentimes do is I cut myself with a pocket knife and I take care of my knives. My knives are always very sharp. So when I cut a finger, the cut is really clean. So to help the wound grow together quicker these wound strips are really really helpful and because they do not weigh a lot I always carry them with me. My third 
wound care or like a band-aid thing is uh, kinesio tape or kines kinesiology tape. It's this stretchy tape that you see on athletes that they tape their shoulders or everything. But what I like to use them is uh, mostly on my feet. When I get bad blisters, uh, I usually get them around my heels. And with these small band-aids, it's really hard to put them so they don't start rolling off. This strip uh, is okay for uh, like a weekend trip, but if I go on a longer trip I usually take more of it. It is really really nice to cover my band-aids with this one. It has quite a strong glue on it so it doesn't roll off, it doesn't start to roll off. It's really nice and sturdy on your skin but it allows your skin to breathe. This is a game changer for me and because it is stretchy you can cover really weird places. And in junction with the kinesi kinesiology tape, this is such a hard word, I carry in a separate Ziploc bag these like wound band-aids or like wound tampons they call them. They are basically, it's not this like strandy cotton, it's more like a cloth but they are clean, breathable and soft uh, little squares that you can buy from a pharmacy. So I use them for my blister care when I have really big blisters and then I use my little uh, scissors and I cut a hole in these uh, squares and then I put it over my blister so the blister stays here in the middle and then when I tape it with my kinesio, kinesio, kinesio tape, I will just say it, kinesio tape. When I tape it with kinesio tape, it helps to keep the pressure away from the blister and they are lightweight, they don't take a lot of space so I always have them with me just because I have nasty blisters. Next up in my kit is uh, like Pern Gear, Pern Shield gel for burns and scalds. I did not have anything for burns uh, for a long time in my kit until I really badly burned my fingers on my stove and then it hurt so bad that it even woke me up from my sleep and I had really bad sleep and I was really grumpy the whole hike it kind of ruined it but like my finger was okay but it just kept like pulsating this nasty nasty burning pulsating pain it just made my hike really grumpy so when I found out you can buy these burn gels in these little tiny packets it's like one euro per one packet and it's perfect for one use it would be silly not to have something like this in your kit because burns hurt real bad. When you go out hiking you should always have some painkillers with you and take a lot like take many sheets because uh, of course you can uh, take a pill or two uh, when you have bad uh, muscle aches or headache or something but in my emergency kit I take a lot of painkillers because if I would need to hike out from a trail with a, some kind of broken bone or a sprained ankle or something really bad you just need a lot of painkillers to get you through this pain to reach the point where people can help you. So if you take painkillers with you, take a lot and make sure you read from your information sheet how many pills you can take per day. And of course you should always have some pills with you that are your personal, maybe you, uh, what I have, I have my migraine pills because I do get migraines and I never leave anywhere without my migraine pills. Some allergy pills if you know you have some allergies and always make sure if you go hiking with somebody, uh, let them know you need some special medication so they know where to find them and help you when you are, for example, unconscious. Second to last thing in my first aid kit is uh, a knife that is actually also in my emergency kit, but I keep it in my first aid kit because it has scissors that I use for cutting my uh, kinesio tape and also the light white little squares to make a hole in them. What I have here nicely tucked in into my pocket knife are tweezers and you should always have tweezers with you as well to um, take out uh, little th thorns, splinters, ticks, whatever. I have them here with my pocket knife that are really nice and handy and small but you can also have like a separate pair of tweezers. 
And the last thing in my first aid kit is a mirror that also is on the list of my emergency kit, but it lives in my first aid kit because I need it to check my face if I have something wrong here or maybe check my back for ticks. Anyway, I use it quite often, so it stays in my active part of the bag, so I wouldn't have to go to my emergency kit all the time to get it out and off. So it sort of is a very important in your first aid thing as, a, as well, whatever injuries or wounds you have in places that you can't reach very well. So you just check them in the mirror. And this is all. This is my first aid kit. You see it's quite minimal because I know where I am hiking. I have uh, compiled my kit in my needs, my blister needs and my medication needs. Also, my kit is designed for Sonia, where I don't have any deadly poisonous uh, animals or snakes or spiders. So if you live in an area where this is an issue, you might need to carry something as extra with you. That is all. Thank you so much for uh, watching. I hope you learned something from here. I made a fun, illustrated, easy to follow checklist for all of the items you should have in your first aid kit. You can download it for free on the description box below. You, you will find a link. And um, until next time, stay well, stay safe. And uh, yeah, take care. <laughs> Bye.